All right. What did you guys think of the episode? Great. So I, I want to say two things before I start asking questions. The first thing is, look at how fucking fly every one of these women looks tonight. It's amazing to me. Uh, I also want to say I've done a lot of panels. I've never done a panel that was all women and this many women. So this is very cool. All right. So first question, um, I'm actually going to throw it to, to Juliet first, but other people can answer it. When you, when you got involved in this project, did you know what the arc of your character in the story was, or were you guys finding that out with each script? I'm going to... You should, you should pass that. Somewhere. Pass that? Okay. <laughs> Who wants to take that? Melanie? Wait, I was just focusing on her eating her cookie. Um, <laughs> so cute. I was like, what's she going to do with that cookie? So I wasn't really... Okay, was, I'll ask how much again. did we know? Yeah, like how much of the story did you know? Or were you finding it out as you were going along? Well, for me, I'm very paranoid about getting into something and not knowing that people have a plan in place. Like, I'm, I'm very nervous about um, being stuck in something where people are like, I don't know. So I really grilled them when I had the meeting to potentially do the show. And I said, what happens in episode five? What happens, you know? So they, they gave me a lot of information about the, the plot of this season, next season, season five. Like, they really had... Wow. A, yeah. They, they have, like, a real plan. <laughs> Would have been nice. So I was like... <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Tell us, she please. Got all I, the I mean, all the tea. how's the time? What did you say, Christina? Melanie has all the information. Oh, yeah. That's wow, so it's already going to be five I'm paranoid and anxious. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let me, well, does anybody else want to chip in on that or you all move um, on to that? I didn't question? know anything. I, um, I, I specifically said I didn't want to know anything my character didn't know. Uh, so I was told nothing except when I went to the hair and makeup trailer and then they talked <laughs> relentlessly and I, and I found out everything <laughs> and I was like, I do what? <laughs> All right. So this question is for those of you, which is, I think everybody, but Ella, sorry, Ella, the next question I'll throw to you first. Um, but obviously you're all playing the same character at different points in their lives. Um, and, and in a way, you're kind of in different shows because obviously you can't be in the same scene at once unless there's some time travel situation I don't know about yet. I'm looking at Melanie. Um, so how did you work together, collaborate, like figure out how to play these characters so that they would seem, you know, fluid and related? Tanya and I talked about little things. Like I called her one day on set like, oh my God, do we say either? Or do we say either? Oh, I wow. think those are the small details that'll really tie it together. And then there was also movements that the character does uh, that it, she doesn't know she does. And uh, we discussed that in, in great detail. In a park. In a park. Got some weird looks. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, but yeah, um, so we collaborated quite a bit on, on, on uh, uh, Thais's. Uh, and I taught her about the Enneagram. What? I taught you about the Enneagram because I'm an Enneagram nerd. And so I filled her in on that. And I, I'm a six. You got Enneagram fans on there? Six. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm a loyalist. <laughs> I'm a four. She's a two. Oh, I'm a two? No, no, no. I'm a She's two. A, oh, Sammy's a two. Yeah. And Thaisa is a three wing two. Anyway, I'll stop. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, Melanie and I kind of also went and grabbed coffee and, and just to make sure we were all in the same length about the character I, I had to just like physically wise had to change my hair because I'm usually blonde I had like the contact lenses um I know we spoke we speak on like different like tones of voices like I remember on the reading she had the first line um and then she spoke and she spoke quite high pitched and I'm a little lower mm -hmm. and then I freaked out because there was everyone from Showtime sitting around us. I'm like, I'm getting fired. I don't even look like her. I don't <laughs> even know why I got casted. And then I'm like sitting and I'm freaking out. And then I spent the whole reading just like just trying to talk a bit more like this. Um, <laughs> turns out I didn't get fired. It's fine. Um, yeah. So maybe that we tried to match and other like little details that were so dumb, like on set. I remember writing in the journal and then being like, Wait, are you left or right-handed? I think you're right-handed, right? Yeah. And then I had to like switch that, but I couldn't just like call you in the middle of the day, anyways. But yeah, I, I, I could have, I didn't, but I figured it out. It's fine. 
<laughs> Did you get a hold of her? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you called her for yeah, me. Yeah, we couldn't get a hold oh of Tawny, God, so, so I was like, I'm going to go call. And we were running around Because she's set. a two on the Enneagram. I'm a, two. a yeah. helper. Yeah. Christina, uh, it was cool because just hearing, because, I mean, we didn't really get to see each other ever um, on set, but it was really cool to hear crew be like, did you guys talk about how you push up the glasses? And I was like... I mean, not really, yet we somehow did it the same way, which was just a really cool coincidence. Um, and I think that, you know, just having somebody who who loves Misty the way that I, <laughs> that we both do, I think that, um, yeah, it just has worked really well. And, of course, we talked about the character, but I think there's certain things that we just naturally both picked up. Yeah. Definitely. I first want to say just thank you, everyone, for being here. I know there's a lot of hoops to jump through to come to something like this. And we really appreciate you guys taking the time and all the steps to be here. Um, but yeah, so Sammy and I met before um, episode two because we didn't really have much time before the pilot. Yeah. Um, and we kind of talked about the different ways we'd be playing Misty and um, the different plans. And also with Misty, there's a bit of like a, a clinical diagnosis to go along with her. Um, and so we <laughs> sort of had to discuss that and come to a conclusion about that. And then that sort of sets a lot of ground rules for behavior. Um, so we did, we discussed all that. We discussed the different references we were given. Um, and, uh, and then anytime there would be, so not, sometimes in some of the episodes, uh, they have the present story mirror something that has happened in a flashback. And any time we had something like that, whoever went first would tell the other person kind of how they did it so that you could evoke the same, you, you know, you could help the narrative along a little bit. So sometimes I got to establish it and sometimes she did. Teamwork. <laughs> I feel like Juliet and I were pretty much on the same wavelength from the get-go, uh, artistically, emotionally. Music is a really big thing for me, as it is with Juliet, so we made a playlist, and um, PJ Harvey was a really big influence for Juliet, and I really like PJ Harvey, but she sent me some demos that helped me dig deeper, um, but that for me was like a really specific thing to get into the mindset of Natalie, and it is really important for Natalie. Um, but I think just from the get-go, we were very much in tune with each other, and I, I'm I think very lucky for that. <laughs> and Nina Hagen. Who knows Nina, Nina Hagen? Hagen. Yeah. This one. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting, Sophie, you said that you don't look alike, but when I look at all of you, you do, I mean, even if you don't look exactly alike, the energy that... Like, I had no trouble figuring out who was supposed to be who when I was watching this. It was never confusing at all. Um, so, that's awesome. All right, Ella, you've been left out. Hi. <laughs> so, this question is kind of for the whole, <clears throat> excuse me, back row, but I'll start with you. Um, I was curious about filming the, the plane crash sequences. Um, as a nervous flyer, I always find those very unnerving to watch. But I, and I imagine that they would be unnerving to film, but, I, but also you're acting and you have a lot of practical considerations when you're doing that. Is it scary to do that? What was it like filming all that stuff? Um, yeah, it definitely is. I wouldn't say scary, but like sombering, if that's a word. It is now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, the, I mean, so we, we shot uh, the plane like up on this weird sort of rig. It was on a sort of angle and it was like, you know, shaking around and moving back and forth and like, you know, when you have everything like the plane windows and the seats and, you know, it's, it, your brain doesn't know really the difference. So you, immediately there's like kind of panic. I had to kind of work hard at like keeping myself calm and remembering and I'm not a nervous flyer. Um, and then afterwards, yeah, when we shot like the actual crash, I mean, it's disorienting, like having the wires out freight. It was like, it was really a crash plane. I mean, they like, they went to town. They like chopped a plane in half, threw it around the forest. It was like, <laughs> it was crazy. And there's like sparks flying out. There's luggage everywhere, corn nuts flying around. It was like, it wasn't hard to pretend that it was very terrifying. immersive. Yeah, yeah it, it was wasn't acting. kind of scary. <laughs> um, it was also interesting because it was our first day back after a year and a half of COVID. So um, it's interesting that they set that up for us first day back. We just dive right into it. <laughs> but that's how our characters were. They didn't expect that. So, 
Yeah, it was. Um, it was. I, I. I thought it was pretty scary. I'm not gonna lie. Like the first, the first moment we kind of walked on set, I was like, "Oh my god, this is crazy! This is so cool!" And it was kind of we were kind of laughing, and it was fun. And then I think all of us got hit at different moments of like, "This is really um, intense, <laughs> to say the least." And um, yeah, I I already have plane anxiety, um, so I definitely like getting put on the crash and having the plane tilted and you know trying to walk and um the the first day back like sophie was saying they really just were like let's rehearse for two hours and have you guys just like scream and cry and we were like okay um <laughs> awesome and um it was i mean these guys are insane like like in an amazing way it's the best cast ever like they just fully went for it and um we all just kind of were crying um, immediately but then i'm playing a character you know miss Misty, who uh, takes things very differently than me, like Samantha, I'd be bawling my eyes out and freaking out, and she takes things in so differently. So it was it was a lot of um, interesting emotions for myself, at least. <laughs> was it like at all therapeutic to go through that? Like you faced your fear and not no, I have to go to therapy more now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a lot more anxiety now. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> And it was weird for us when we first saw the crash scene because it felt like nothing compared to what we shot. Like, they showed it to us one day at lunch, and I think we all went back to our trailers and cried. Like, oh, my God, we went through a trauma, and it doesn't look like that on screen. I it's think it looks around. amazing, no? But you know, oh you guys my know God. what I mean. Like, on well, the day, you shot it in wait, two days. You're coming from a biased experience. And there was all day hours of screaming yeah. and, like, emotional. Distilled to, like, just a couple minutes. Yeah, like two minutes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, me. Um, I mean, they kind of said it all. I wasn't really scared. I was not. Uh, it was kind of fun for me. It was, like was kind of like a roller coaster, <laughs> the little, like, plane that we were propped on. And then we did get there, like, I, they just wanted to show me the set. I was not prepared for rehearsal. I also don't like rehearsing. And then these people started screaming, and I was like, <laughs> oh, guess I have to scream, too, now. Um, <laughs> Ella and I were lucky to be seated in like the front, so <laughs> we were like really acting, and then they were get, doing all the heavy work in the back. I was like, I passed out, right? I have to do anything. Yeah, both I and we're like passed out. We're like, oh, we'll just we'll just sleep as long as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, they were amazing. They, I think, the the site itself was like crazy, but I think what really brought the whole thing to life was like them just being hysterical and like screaming. And I think when they started acting. And then I and then I acted. Um, <laughs> then it all came. Not not that I made it all come together, but then you get what I mean. I'll just stop. Anyways, it was it was very fun. Uh, can I add one more thing? Um, yeah. One one thing that was really funny was uh, you know everyone's obviously like it's very dramatic and, and very intense. But then one person I think said, well, it kind of sounds like everyone's making some interesting moaning sounds after a while. After we were kind of like doing it for <laughs> a while, like we were giving <laughs> birth. Why are you <laughs> looking at me? <laughs> I'm sorry, but it just it got it got pretty it got. Pretty I fun. say that <laughs> you were like just listen to everybody for a second, then you were like. Does that sound like something else? And I was like, oh. And then we oh just all started laughing. It was, it was, we did have fun too. <laughs> okay, yeah. sorry. I shouldn't have added that. Okay. Actually, that was a great segue for my <laughs> next question, which is to Melanie. Oh. It'll be okay. okay. I promise you. So in, in the episode that everyone just watched, there's a scene where Shauna is in her daughter's bedroom looking at her daughter's boyfriend's picture and having a good time. Um, what does that tell us about her psychologically? Because I thought that was just so interesting. And I've seen more than they have, so I don't want to give away too much. But can you talk about that a little bit? I th for me, I had a little bit of a hard time <laughs> with that scene. Um, and so I was sort of talked to about it a lot by Karen, our director, um, and by Ashley and Bart. And I think, you know, it shows she doesn't really have a ton of boundaries She's an unpredictable person. And also there's a little bit of arrested development. Like there's a little bit of like, she went through a crazy trauma and is still stuck in this place where I think she kind of wants to start living her life back at that point and having those kinds of experiences. And here she is like in her forties with a mean teenage daughter and just like what the fuck is this you know like, right she's yeah so i think that's what that scene says very embarrassing to film was it 
Yeah. Like, <laughs> I would rather do a sex scene any day than just like <laughs> masturbate. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> Well, you did also, it very well. Well, thank you. Karen was very specific about the noise. Karen was like, it needs, like, the orgasm needs to sound like this. And I was like, can't it just sound like anything? She was like, no. <laughs> she, she, like, gave me a line reading of the orgasm. What, what, was, yeah. what was the reason for that? Like, what was she going for? Like a... <laughs> what was she going for? <laughs> like a kind of... Um, not really a satisfied she wanted it to be like kind of a horrible sort of like well that happened kind of noise which i think it was i mean and no, i was I like you're, you're gonna have to that. show me what that is and she was like okay i mean oh my God. wow well melanie's gonna kill me after this panel um so it's been nice knowing you all <laughs> um i want to ask about the music in the show um, because I think it is so well chosen. I liked it so much, it's, especially the 90s stuff really is evocative of that era. Um, Juliet, I'll pose this to you for obvious reasons um, to start with, but anyone can chime in. Sometimes in scripts they actually will put the songs in there, just even as placeholders, and sometimes they won't. Did you guys have any sense of what the soundtrack was going to sound like? No, they just did a brilliant job, and they did it right and, and shined a light on... Well, when I saw the clip of uh, Tracy Bonham, wait, is that it? Is it in this now? Wait, with Mother, her song, Tracy Bonham. Is, is, is it in this one? I can't remember. Well, I just fucked that up. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's not in it. It's, it's in another one. Yeah. The point is, every music cue is just on point. Everybody's talking about, oh my God, the 90s, because we're all in this place. It's, a, it's an earlier time of obviously uh, simpler times, but it's brilliant you know when you have the right music uh it puts you immediately in a an emotional place and the the place of the time and they did that great but it wasn't in the script like okay. music cues okay um so i'm gonna go down the line of, of the front line first and then the back line first since we're talking about the 90s for all of you who were kind of coming of age young adults during the 90s what do you miss about that era if anything um, there was a certain kind of uh, toughness and sort of uh, gritty sexuality as a teenage woman. I don't know, I'm thinking of like Courtney Love, PJ Harvey, like all the, you know, like Bikini Kill, all those women. Like there were a lot of role models that I had that were like sexual interesting women, but not necessarily like sexy or cute. Like there was like a, a vibe that I really like identified with and I felt very empowered by that um, and it was such a big part of the culture and I kind of miss that. Mm. Tani, what about you? Um, I'm going to go with the first, I thought about it uh, while she was talking. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the first La La Palooza because there was nothing like it. Uh, going to that was Jane's Addiction Shirt. Jane's Addiction Shirt, of course, come on. And, uh, uh, yeah, just, um, the, 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 that first Lollapalooza, that was the first of its kind where it was, um, we were all still so very innocent and, uh, that's, that's what I miss. That's what I'm going with. Um, I don't miss anything. I like oh. living in the present. <laughs> I'm not looking back. Um, I wore a lot of... Carhartt's pants and baby tees, and um, I really enjoyed that. Um, I also, though, have to say I agree with Melanie. I miss sort of the, what was sort of popular and considered um, alluring at the time for women, which was really like being as interesting as possible and contributing as much and not being um, overtly sexual in like, you know, we didn't have to look like porn stars to be considered sexually viable. Um, and uh, I miss some of that. It was about being, you know, tough and, and artistic and interesting. Mm -hmm. So I miss some of that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, it's I mean, I'm not like across the board, though. <laughs> I could be, I could be wrong. Uh, there was a New York Times article that was written in 1996 calling it the year of the teenage girl. And I don't know if that's influenced them to set it in that year specifically, but I thought that was really interesting. 
So for the that wasn't the case. I did photo shoots in the '90s, and yeah, they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't do it without makeup. So the '90s is not romantic in that way. Um, but it was pre-social media, so that was awesome. Right, right, right. right. We were really encouraged to be aggressive. What? We were encouraged to be aggressive. I was not. I was. I just was. I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, but I don't know about the, the year of the teenage girl. That struck me. I think they were just strange. talking about in terms of like film and television and representation of and, and an interest in catering to that. Um, not that it was like the best time for a, for a girl to be a teenager necessarily. Um, but anyway, so for the youngins, uh, I want to ask you, since you were playing characters living in the 90s, what would you like, would you like to go back to that time period? What do you think you would appreciate about it or not appreciate about it? Um... I'm born in 2000, so I'm not really aware of what was going on during the 90s. Um, but you, but you, ha you, you. you but but now that I've done some research, yeah. I mean, yeah. sort of. I really liked um, all the rom-coms. I thought they were way better back then. Um, so, moving on. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna get too much better of an answer from me. I feel like women's rights are better now. It's better to be a queer person of color now. I don't think I would have that much fun in the 90s. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think when I think of the 90s, I was born in 95. Um, <laughs> and I just I just think about my sisters because I'm the youngest of five girls. So growing up, the coolest thing ever was like my sisters. And so when I think of them, I still have them in my head as like in the 90s. Um, and so I just think about their caboodles and like them like <laughs> trying to do like my makeup and stuff like that. It was like, you know, it was just, I don't know. I guess I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> I was also born in 2000, but there were a lot of music references for me to draw. Um, when I was in high school, when I was Natalie's age, I was listening to what she probably would have been listening to, like My Bloody Valentine, a lot of shoegaze, a lot of, <laughs> um, a lot of punk stuff. So it was easy for me to go back into that mindset. I was also, I think my so-called life came out in 96, and Angela Chase was a reference for that. So there were a lot of references that I could draw, even though I was born in 2000, but it's very different now with Instagram. I feel like people are more calculated, um, less adventurous, um, more monitored, uh, which sucks. <laughs> it really yeah. sucks. Um, oh, well, my first thought was like those butterfly hair clips, and then <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> more about it. <laughs> and <laughs> And I don't really have anything better. But I, what I do like is like the, I don't know, just, I'm not going to say that actually. <laughs> oh, now I'm dying to know what that was. Now you have to say well, that. Well, okay, well, so my like, my teenage crush was like Johnny Depp from the 90s and that whole like vibe. But just like when they, like pictures of them on the red carpet and like Drew Barrymore and Cameron, and they had like the dark lip and the grungy thing going like smoking on the carpet. I think that's so fucking cool. <laughs> We can and I say anywhere. smoking on the red carpet, is that terrible? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to smoke anywhere. Really? We wanted to. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's nice to me. Pictures. That's great. <laughs> That's, I miss that from the 90s also. <laughs> <laughs> All the smoking. <laughs> so, um, last question, which actually, Melanie, you kind of inadvertently answered this a little bit earlier, but I was just wondering if you feel there's more story to tell after this first season, and if you anticipate that, I know it's a little premature, but it sounds like from what you've heard from the showrunners that they have a whole vision for beyond what happens in this season. Yeah, I mean, they're, God willing, there's something beyond the first season. I would love it because I don't know if you can tell, we love each other so much. <laughs> it's like, oh, don't. <laughs> Don't. She's a crier. She's a crier. Sorry. I'm not gonna touch it. Like somebody just like <laughs> touches my arm. Oh. Um, it was such a great experience. I would love for more. But yeah, they really have it like sketched out for beyond. You know, some things they're wrapping up quickly within the first season, and then there are other things that play out like over much longer you know I ask them very specific questions like well when does this thing happen when does this thing happen and it's like you know they have a real long long-term plan so I hope they get to do it well I do too can I just say something please um Natalie was really depressing to play 
and she's a de-evolution, so you sort of devolve. Uh -huh. And I didn't know that. Okay. Um, but every one of these people up here is so beyond um, talented and wonderful. And this was a post-pandemic show. It was very difficult. Um, but the show's awesome. And but my character is like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> But you play her beautifully. Yeah, you do. I like just showed up. I did the best I could. It wasn't what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> the cookie. The cookie. Oh, no. <laughs> Julia. Well, let me, let me say this. Yeah. I, oh, go ahead. Did you want to say something? No, 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 no. I, 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 um, I, I would hope, uh, certainly by the end of the season, uh, winter hasn't even hit. So right. there are more stories to tell for sure. And, girl, stop. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say there. I love her to death. Well, I just want to say, having kind of observed you guys backstage, that uh, that does seem really true. You all really seem to enjoy each other's company. And I've enjoyed moderating this with you all, and, and I look forward to... I hope you all enjoyed it and look forward to more episodes starting tomorrow night is the first one, which you've already seen. Thank you, every guys. Every Sunday on Showtime. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming out. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.